I have just finished building this quadcopter and I'm about to power it up for the first time. But I do not want to take a chance that when I plug that battery in, poof, something smokes and I blow up my expensive flight controller or ESC. And that's why I'm going to take you through the process of smoke checking your new build. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. Before we get into the content of this video, I want to acknowledge that this is something I've shown in basically every build video that I've done in the last year or so, but it's not something I've ever put in a video by itself, and so I think a lot of people might have missed it. And my exact process for smoke checking a new build probably has a few steps that you're, I don't know, tell me at the end of the video whether you already were doing all of these steps or whether I taught you something new. And the first thing we're going to do is get out our multimeter and we're going to put it in continuity check mode. And that is this little, looks like a Wi-Fi icon. It actually is meaning to denote the sound of the speaker in continuity check mode. When you touch the probes together, it beeps. When there is electrical connectivity between the two probes, like this is conductive, it will beep. Now on some multimeters, you're not going to have a dedicated continuity check position on the dial. For example, on this multimeter, to get to the continuity, see it right there? To get to continuity check, you put it in the ohms mode and then you press the, you press the, there we go, there it was, right up there. There it is, and you got continuity check. But however you do it, you're going to put your multimeter in continuity check mode. And then, you're going to check for continuity first between the two prongs of the XT60. If there is continuity between the prongs of the XT60, it means there's a short circuit between positive and negative, and it'll be like short circuiting the battery when you finally plug it in, and that'll be bad. Something will smoke or your battery will be damaged or maybe even light on fire. So I'm just gonna kinda stick this in here a little bit because I only have two hands, and I'm gonna touch here and no beep. That's good, that's what we want. And we can reverse the prongs as well. And when we do that, we did get a beep, which might concern you. That brings us to point number two. If your build has a capacitor installed on it, then that capacitor will cause some beeping. Check it out. No beep, but when I switch the legs, some beeping, and then the beeping stops. The capacitor itself takes a little bit of energy to charge up and that energy allows current to flow and when that current flows the multimeter detects that and it beeps but once the capacitor charges up the beep stops. So the first check is to check between the prongs of the XT60 and we do not want to hear a beep or if we do hear a beep it will be a few seconds and then stop and that is how we pass the check. If that check fails, you have a short circuit and you need to figure out where it's coming from. I'll show you how to do that a little later in the video. Now the next thing we want to do is make sure that we haven't accidentally mixed up our positive and our negative wires somewhere in the process of wiring up our quad. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the probes and put it on the positive wire and then Think about the wiring of the quad. The positive wire goes into the ESC, and then from there, it goes through this plug to the flight controller. And so we can look on the flight controller for a VBAT pad, and we should see continuity. There should be continuity between the positive pin of the XT60 and the VBAT pad on the flight controller. Now, I don't see a VBAT pad broken out on this flight controller. Some flight controllers may not break that out. We've got this power pad here going to the video transmitter, but if I touch that, I do not get any continuity there. Maybe the flight controller is powering the video transmitter from a 9-volt regulator or something like that. Or maybe there's a pit switch that is switching off that pad so it doesn't have continuity. Um, if your flight controller has a VBAT pad, then that's what you will test. If it doesn't have a VBAT pad, one thing you can do is you can actually just look at this plug coming from the ESC. And you see the red wire is the second wire over, it goes ground, VBAT. And these pins here at the very back of the plug will have continuity there. We can find the second one and we can test and sure enough, we do have continuity. So that tells us we have wired correctly all the way through from the ESC, from the battery to the flight controller. What about the video transmitter? When you're performing this check, you're gonna to wanna to think about the structure of the wiring of the quadcopter. If your video transmitter was powered off of VBAT, then you would wanna come all the way to the end of the line and test here 
to see that the video transmitter was also getting VBAT and was wired correctly. You're going to want to think about the sort of branching structure of your wiring, or maybe it's just a linear chain, but you're going to want to get all the way down to the end and make sure that all the way at the end of that structure or that chain, you have VBAT wired in correctly. In this case, it seems like we do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move over to the ground pin and we're going to do that same check. Now, ground is pretty easy to check because there's usually a ton of ground pads all over the flight controller. But the simplest thing in my experience to do is to test the outside of the USB plug, which always is grounded. Uh, and then we can come all the way over to the video transmitter and the outside of the antenna connector is going to be grounded. And that is basically always going to be the case. So we have now verified that we have wired ground correctly basically everywhere. I mean, we could check the camera, but chances of screwing that up are pretty low. We could check here, check on the receiver. Yep, okay, ground is in the correct place. Basically check everything to see that ground is in the right place, and it is. Next, we're gonna get out our smoke stopper. And a lot of people would say, Bardwell, you just checked everything with your multimeter. Why do you need a smoke stopper? It's true, there shouldn't be any faults or any problems. Everything should be good to go, and I should be safe to plug in and nothing will fry. But I always like to use a smoke stopper anyway. It's just good insurance, and there can be things that don't show up in a multimeter test that can still cause a short circuit or something to fry. There's basically no downside to doing it, and there's lots of upsides. So get yourself one of these. If you're not sure what this is or what it does, I've got a video linked in the video description explaining it and where you can get one. Before you power the quad up, make sure you've put an antenna on your video transmitter. This is easy to overlook when you're working on the bench, and if you power up a video transmitter with no antenna, it is likely to be damaged. Here we go. No smoke, no smoke, no smoke. No smoke. Fantastic. We have got a fully working quad. Our smoke check is passed. Our basic function check is passed. And we're ready to proceed with configuring the quad. Earlier in this video, I told you that if you did have a short circuit between positive and ground, that I would tell you how to find the short circuit. Like, where is it? There's actually a procedure for that. It's not too complicated, and I've got a video showing you how to do it. I'll put a card on screen, and you can check that out if you're interested. In the meanwhile, if you are continuing with the build of this quadcopter, I'll put a link on screen to the playlist, and you can head on to the next video. See you there.